Good evening. My name is Larry McKinley. I'm the chair of the State and Planning Commission, and we are now going to call this meeting to order. Um, do a roll call, starting with Dixie, please. Turn your mic on. Turn your mic on. Just Dixie Ellard. Richard Lewis. Pete Bellis. Amy Watts. And for all of you, Lucas is our student representative from State and High School who's sharing in the pleasure of this with us. So tonight, um, we have the minutes from last meeting. Has anybody had, everybody had a chance to read those? And are there any changes or additions? Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes as prepared? Motion to accept the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Motion carries. Very good. All right. We have three agenda items tonight. Um, the first one was, and I'll just, I'll read the statement in a second, but it was on a land partition or a lot partition on Evergreen and Ivy, or on Ida and Evergreen. And the applicant has requested to continue that hearing to September. So I'll make those comments here. Good evening. My name is Larry McKinley. I am the chairperson of the State and Planning Commission, and I will be continuing the public hearing in the matter of land use file number 3-01-24, an application for preliminary partition divide to divide 313 North Evergreen Avenue located in the medium density residential zone. Uh, the commission's decision to continue this hearing may be appealed to the state and city council within 14 days, the mailing of the notice of the decision in accordance. So the hearing is continued. All right. We have another hearing before us tonight, and I have a statement that I have to read through to make sure that everything's legal. So bear with me as I go through this. Good evening. My name is Larry McKinley. I'm the chairperson of the State and Planning Commission. I will be presiding over this hearing. This is the time and place set forth for public hearing in the matter of land use file number 9-12-23, a legislative amendment to permit a use with site plan review, general merchandise stores, in the interchange development zone. This hearing is now open. Oregon land use law requires a statement be made to those in attendance that covers certain matters relative to this case. The statement with the information required to be presented under ORS 197.797 Boleg 5 is printed and available at the back counter. If you have not received one of these forms, you should go get one and review it prior to presenting your testimony. If anyone has any questions regarding anything on the statement or objects to it not being read out loud, please raise those questions when it comes to your turn to speak during the hearing. Also at the back counter is the agenda for this evening's meeting, which lays out the order in which people will be called to speak during the public hearing. The Planning Commission's rules of procedure for land use public hearings and a brochure written to facilitate your participation in the public hearing. You are encouraged to obtain and read a copy of these documents as well. At this time, I would like, I would ask the audience if there are any objections to the notice that was sent in this case. Hearing none, to the jurisdiction of this body to hear and consider this case. Hearing none, I, are there any declarations of conflict or interest, ex parte contact or bias by any men members of this body? Hearing none, we're now ready for the staff introduction and report. Thank you. Um, as you know, only the Planning Commission or the City Council can initiate a text amendment to the State and Land Use and Development Code, Title 17. Um, as pre at a previous pl um, Planning Commission meeting, it was discussed that the Planning Commission won the land use application to put forward a text amendment. Uh, an application came for site plan review that was submitted, which will be heard at a separate public hearing. 
This public hearing is solely for the Planning Commission to consider a text amendment to allow for general merchandise store use within the interchange ID zone to be reflected in the, ta the table permitted land uses. Permitting this additional use will affect all parcels within the ID zone. There are only four parcels. Two of these parcels have already been developed with Arco and Dairy Queen. Um, the four parcels uh, were also part of a sublimity interchange area management plan um, that planned for that area of the interchange and in Highway 22. Um, the city wants to make sure that any change of use in the district is consistent with the district purposes, which I have laid out in the staff report, um, what the purpose of this zone is supposed to be. And the change of use needs to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Uh, in the comprehensive plan, the goal in the econo economy chapter is to provide for future commercial, industrial, and social needs of the community with a balanced mix of economic activity. And uh, policy EC4, which is under that goal, um, it is for the policy of the city to discourage commercial development at Highway 22. And then there's an action item under this policy that said the city shall continue the interchange development zone near uh, Highway 22, oh, shall not, actually, um, what did I write in the staff report? The city shall continue the interchange development show, zone near Highway 22 interchange to limit commercial uses to traveler oriented. So it isn't to just, um, it's to limit them to travel oriented. So uh, the planning, let's see, the planning commission and the city needs to consider the pros and cons of changing the use. The parcel in question has been vacant for years. Development could provide additional tax revenue, create jobs, yet potentially low wage jobs, but offer affordable goods to their residents. At the same time, it will be the gateway to the city and the type of development sets the tone for the city. It also may divert customers from locally owned businesses deeper within the city. The staff recommends that to be consistent with the comprehensive plan that you do not recommend this text amendment. And then at this stage, it would just die. But if the Planning Commission would like to entertain the idea of a general merchandise store use within the ID zone, it is recommended that you allow it by site plan review and you limit it to potentially 8,000 square feet. This would be very similar to the commercial retail zone where general merchandise use is, is allowed, but only up to 8,000 square feet. Um, so staff has provided a draft order if you would like to proceed with this direction. Um, so there's a lot of things to think about, um, including um, is this considered traffic oriented uh, commercial? So um, I'll just leave it there for discussion. Is there, are there questions from the commission? Questions. All right. So I think it, just for clarification purposes, for the record, the lot we're talking about this destination. So if we did this for the, the interchange development zone, it would apply to all four lots or parcels within the interchange development zone. Two that are already developed with the Dairy Queen and Arco, and the two that are on the north side of Whitney one on the left and one on the right, right there, just before you get to what I would say is the liquor store partial right there, they're across the highway from that. Um, I guess for, so commercial, re, so this would be for general merchandise is what we're talking about here then, because commercial real estate already is, re, commercial retail is re, already restricted to 8,000 square feet. Correct. Okay, very good. All right, and so it's not time for discussion. It was only for uh, questions at this point. So at this point, 
Um, is there any questions or testimony from the public with regards to this parcel? Testimony? Yep. Yes, and if you're gonna do, you come to the table and you turn on the mic there. If it's not already on in green, you push the button and we'll need your name and your address as part of the record, please. I think it was already on. Can you hear me? Yep. My name is Jennifer Carter. I live at 411 Whitney Street. I've lived in Staten for 21 years, and I've always described our town as a perfect little hometown. We have everything we need here. Uh, it's not too far from the bigger city for what we don't have. Many of us know each other. We do business with each other, attend church together, and some of us are related. Now that hometown ideal is being threatened. Right now, we already have one Dollar Tree in our town, a Dollar General five miles away in Almsville, a Dollar General 10.5 miles away in Turner, and another Dollar General 16.5 miles away in Mill City. Just a small amount of research will show that just like big box stores, this town is kept at bay. These small box retailers that carry a wide variety of items at discount prices are also small town killers. Not only do they drive out grocery stores and other businesses, they attract crimes like shoplifting and they're often poorly maintained. They're notoriously understaffed and they affect the image of our town when it comes to tourism. Tourism, tourists seek unique businesses, not chain stores. As stated previously, this is a gateway to our community. Uh, some supporters say these discount stores offer a lifeline to low-income families. We already have a grocery outlet. We now have the Eagle Bargain Outlet, two locally owned stores that provide that service. Locally owned businesses spend a large percentage of their profits locally. They pay rent, buy supplies, hire accountants, lawyers, and other professionals, engage in cleaning and trash collection services, buy advertising, utility services, pay property and sales tax, support local schools, civic and charitable, charitable groups. They also support their owner's households, their staff households, and the many local businesses from which those households pay for housing, transportation, food, clothing, et cetera. By contrast, only a small percentage of a dollar chain's profits remain in the community. They flow back to the corporation and the corporation then spends the profits on expansion, dividends, director's compensation. Even their rent payments usually go to out of area developers. The community ultimately loses local wealth and gains nothing in return. Numerous studies have shown that roughly 45 to 60 percent of a dollar spent in a locally owned business remains and recirculates in the community versus only 14 to 30 percent spent in chain stores. As, as far as providing jobs for the community, nearly every business in this town is already looking for employees. A company spokesperson for Dollar General said, that the average store has just six to 10 employees. As of February, 2023, 92% of Dollar General employees were making less than $15 per hour. And in 2019, the median income for a Dollar General worker across the country was only $14,500 per year. Last year, workers at a store in Connecticut attempted to form a union seeking more job security and better processes for addressing grievances. They lost. Workers at a California warehouse have also sought to unionize. They also lost. Because dollar chain store, dollar stores focus on minimizing their costs, they failed to invest in adequate store security, understaffing, inadequate security equipment, and a high volume of cash transactions make them easy targets for robberies. A Georgia sheriff said, we don't call them dollar stores, we call them stop and robs. In Dayton, Ohio, where more than one quarter of all commercial robberies in 2019 took place at a Dollar General store, a police detective called dollar stores robbery magnets. The major chain stores have all been cited numerous times for serious security violations that endanger workers and shoppers from exposed electrical wiring to inaccessible emergency exits to serious rodent infestations. Dollar General stores have been cited multiple times for safety violations. For example, the store in Baldwin, Wisconsin faced more than $400,000 in fines from OSHA for a variety of safety violations, including padlocking the exit doors. This was the sixth time that 
Sure. The city council and the city council have done some of the same research. I can't see how this is in the best interest of our community. All right, thank, thank you. you. I just wanted to make one point of clarification and good presentation. What we're addressing right now is only an amendment to land use. And we know what's on the back side of it, I know. but right now it's strictly that. So Dollar General isn't part of that discussion. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, very good. All right. So are there any other, any other public testimony? Hearing none, is there a staff summary? Uh, no, no, okay. just what I- Very good. Then at okay. this point, I'm going to close the hearing and we will open it up for commission deliberation. So, thoughts? It's on the, the Yeah, the, the interchange development zones, I mean, have a very specific um, target. You know, there's only two lots that are in that development zone that are available. And the, the idea that someone stops and then continues along their way uh, is what's used in most of those things. And the two businesses that are there now, I mean, fit that bill. Um, a general merchandise store wouldn't fit that, that need. And I don't see that amending it to include that category makes a lot of sense. Right. Other input? I agree. You agree? Okay. So a couple of things that I would like to clarify, and I, it's, it's in our report here, but an interchange development zone, and I think two things are of interest. It's the city council's action. The city council continue uh, interchange development zone near Highway 20 to interchanges to limit commercial use to travel or to orientate. And so when the list uses are listed under an interchange development zone, it's a food and beverage, which we have there, gasoline station, which we have there, gift and novelty stores, a commercial bank, but it would have to have two drive through lanes. So that's pretty well limited there. Hotel, motel in, but RV park, bed and breakfast, eating and drinking places and things like that are what are encouraging those because Right now, the leaves are on the trees, but when the leaves go off the trees pretty soon, that becomes a very prominent view shed into the gateway into the city estate. And what, if my position on the commission, I want to see businesses that are going to bring people off the highway that are traveling, that would bring them into our area to see and spend money at those locations. I personally don't know that a commercial building, however it's oriented, its front door is going to have to be towards Whitney, so because that's the only access into that property. Um, then you're going to have a back end of a store looking up into our view shed. So what's that going to present? So is there other discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I thought a lot about this. And uh, the interchange zone is designed for uh, stop and go shopping. Uh, the merchandise store is designed for uh, stop, shop, park, go, and I can just see uh, a traffic uh, trying to access Highway 22 or Cascade Highway and also uh, speeding up Third Street to get to uh, uh, San, uh, 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 going past the uh, Santa Ann Park uh, up to Fern Ridge Road. And I just think that uh, we're opening the, uh, to pass this, I think we were, we're opening a lot of uh, problems for the city. Yep. So traffic and circulation would be something that would be under development if you were to get to that point with this slide. It's really not something that's at this time, um, but that, yeah, that's where it sits. So is there other discussion? So, um, is there a motion from the council? I'll second. Okay. Okay. 
it has been moved that we not forward the proposed amendment to the city council for the zone amendment. And it has been seconded. Is there any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So I will say that that is the recommendation of the planning commission. The applicant, if there is an applicant, could appeal to city council if they so choose to do that. So just know that's another option that they have. All right. Good question. Back to the table if you're gonna do it. <laughs> if, do you need me to say my name again? No. Okay. If they appeal to the city council, can the city council override your decision? Absolutely. Dang, okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, this third item on the list becomes moot because it was to discuss whether what that was going to be and whether we were going to allow that. So, staff, is there anything else for the planning commission? Um, no, I, I just would like to say if we if we don't hold the public hearing for um, the site plan review, we we it depends if they appeal it. Um, I guess it will need to be re -no uh, notified if they come back for another application at that point. Right. All right. I have one other quick question. Yes. Does this affect? You got your green on. Yeah. Okay. Does this affect the applicant with the public storage? This covers this. That no. So the other property owner that owns the lot adjacent to that to the east. Um, has been before us, as we know, and said he'd potentially like to build storage units there. That does not fit in the interchange development zone, zone description as it currently exists. So that is not included? Is not. Uh, I was just informed that it does need to, you do need to open the hearing for the site plan review and you can uh, choose to continue it or uh, deny it or um, I have to say that the applicant uh, of the site plan review asked that it be continued at this point. Okay, I was told that you have to continue it because the applicant asked to continue. Right. So, so. In the case of land use file number 10-06 slash 24, slight plan review for lot at 101 Whitney Street in an interchange development zone um, is being continued to the September meeting. That, yep. That's what we need to do? Okay. Yep. And do we need to vote on that? So that's number five on the agenda, right? It's number five. You probably want to vote on it. So all in favor, do we have a motion to continue the hearing? Motion to continue. Second. It's all second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks. All right. That's it. That hearing's closed. We're done. Other business? I have no other. <laughs> Is there any other business? No. Okay. I think we're good. Thank you, Paul, for coming. Appreciate Thanks. it. Everything. <laughs>